You know, I was doing some desoldering and I was getting frustrated as I often do with that thing. Nice invention, I guess. But they don't always work that great. So I was thinking about it and my gaze happened to fall upon my air compressor. And I was thinking, you know, what makes an air compressor work? It's not just that pump, but it's the fact that it's got a reservoir of compressed air to work with that actually does all the work. So, what I think I need is a vacuum pump and a reservoir of vacuum. All right, here we have the vacuum desoldering proof of concept test rig. Here we have vacuum pump, which has a vacuum reservoir there. And that comes out here to the trigger, which has a short nozzle on it. Had to do the trigger backwards because it leaks if you do it the other direction. I guess it's the way it's designed. And the idea here is that we will be able to effortlessly pull solder off of a joint after we heat it, of course. And it will make life easy. Of course, this is just a proof of concept rig. If this works, we'll look at making something that's all in one small unit that works without hassle and only needs to be plugged up and switched on. All right. All right, again, here's the tubing I'm using. So Talons is the brand, it's six millimeter size. Uh, I bought six before I knew it even came in other sizes. You might want to get quarter inch if you're going to have to buy some. Uh, you can still get the same fittings that fit everything. Uh, and quarter inch would be a little more compatible with your uh, air compressor and stuff if you've got that. Six works okay then. All right, and then the way these things work is you just pop them in. And the Talon's kit I bought comes with a clipper, which works pretty well. I don't need to clip it, but there you go. Makes a nice clean cut. All right, let's review the setup here again. Vacuum pump. This one pulls about 28 inches of vacuum max. Uh, it does require 24 volts, thus the 24 volt power supply, which they're fairly expensive these days. My reservoir, the old mason jar I drilled a hole in. And that's the rest of the rig there. The workstation, I guess you might call it. So let's fire up this pump if it is a little noisy and we'll get to work. should also did I mention I have essential tremor which means my hands tremble otherwise known as old man's shaky hands yeah that one didn't go all right let's get a bit of a close-up look on what we got going here and that I'm not too impressed by actually 
One of them did well. The second one, I guess, sort of well. Pretty much nothing. That was when the iron was colder. Started having better results when I got the iron up to a better temperature. So, I believe there's a flaw in my technique. So I'm going to turn that iron up even a little hotter and go through it again, folks. Okay, we're back. Let's try again. Iron's up at a whopping 850. I think my results are better. Can't really tell yet. That doesn't look better. Second pass may not be much solder there to be heated though. Ah, okay. That one looks decent. Taking another look. I can see holes. Oops. That one's not done at all. And them last two are kind of grody. Yeah, three look nice. Those are terrible. Hmm. Starting to wonder here. Maybe I need a better tip. And I'm also seeing right there in the center, there's a little solder got sprayed around. Do we see? Yeah, there's another spot. I'm assuming it's supposed to be bridged or have contact with those capacitors. Okay, what we're going to try here, first I want to trim this back, get the gooky stuff out. We'll open that up maybe later and see how far up it penetrates. I see a little right there. What we're going to do is put some 4 millimeter tubing inside the 6, like that. Maybe that'll give us a finer tip to work with, I hope see how that works uh, also I guess I better reflow some more solder on there here's our test with the new improved much smaller tip Hope it's improved in some way. Let's try this. Probably help if I wasn't sorry at melting adjacent ones, wouldn't it? Going by what I can see here, oh, that's a little better. Let me hit that first one just a bit. And I think I see hole everywhere. And what was that number four that was messed up over here? Let's hit him again. 
You know, I'm liking this little tip. Okay. Let's take another look. See what we've got cooking here. Let's find them. Oh, number four still a little ugly, but number six could use another spot. So could those two. The ones I reflowed the solder on with flux all look. Man, that looks good. Hmm. Maybe I should try reflowing solder on all my stuff. I'm certainly gonna try. Proof is in the removal. Let's see which, yep, yeah, that's the up one. Should come out fairly easy. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness. That's what I want. And that was not rehearsed, folks. That popped right up. So let's clean this rascal up and see what the board is going to be like now. Let's see if we damaged anything. All right, let's get a better look. Ooh, clean from this side. Ah, oh, there's the thing I accidentally desoldered. It's a jumper of some sort, J300. And that's our work on the other side. Don't see anything looks too horrible. Still a little dirty on the flux, but I'll be refluxing the new one and cleaning it up again. So, well, it took a little working out there. What I needed, I needed a better tip temperature. So I'm going to do a preset. That wonderful new soldering station allows me to preset three temperatures. And using that smaller tip was a good thing. The small tip. Okay, I guess it's kind of time to move on to phase two, which is going to be making it smaller and less unwieldy to use. I guess I'll have to find a different vacuum reservoir because that one won't last being dropped. And also, I like to use that one for degassing. Uh, a smaller vacuum pump would be nice. Oh, that one's only 40 bucks on eBay. Power supply was 25, I think. But still, it's all bulky. So, that's what I'm going to try next. My battery's about to run down, so goodbye.